All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're back in Synology DSM-7 and we're gonna be going over Synology Photos, which is one of the biggest updates in DSM-7, in my opinion. Synology Photos is finally taking basically the good parts and moments and the good parts of photos from DSM-6 and combining them into one app that, in my experience, has been really awesome and above all else, amazingly fast, which is critical whenever you've got a Photos application like this you don't want to spend time having to download these massive photo files all just to be able to see them over mobile. Instead of what it does is it just creates very light previews so you can easily see your entire album almost instantaneously, even on mobile. And then the other question that's really important that we're going to be asking is can Synology DSM-7 Photos replace Google Photos? The reason for this is Google Photos has changed their policy from, hey, unlimited storage to, hey, now that everybody's in our closed ecosystem, now we're gonna start charging you monthly for your photo storage. And so a lot of people are trying to get out of that ecosystem, and I think Synology DSM-7 Photos is a great version of that. You can have all the storage you want by just adding more hard drives into your NAS, and you can share them from anywhere, and it's a remarkable app, and above all else, you have total access over your photos. You don't have Google going behind the scenes and using your photos for whatever AI research they want to be doing. Instead, it is all on your unit, and that privacy is really important to a lot of people. It's really important to me personally, though I guess I am on YouTube posting these videos where certainly a lot of people are going to see them. All right, so I've already gone over a video that has a lot of the features, but this one's going to be really focused on installing DSM-7 photos and setting it up for yourself. All right, and so the first thing you're going to go ahead and do is once you're on DSM-7, go into the Package Center, and we're just gonna go and search for photos. And just click it and install. All right, and so while this is installing, I wanna talk about one of the really key benefits to DSM-7 photos and just to a self-hosted photos app like this. It's really the fact that you have total flexibility over it. And more importantly, it's incredibly easy to get out of the ecosystem should you not like its capabilities and should something better come along. Currently, to download your photos from Google Photo, they make you go through this terrible process where you have to download these massive zip files and they just make it incredibly difficult for you because they don't want you to leave. They have made this very difficult to leave on purpose. And so the exact opposite of that is DSM-7 Photos. I'm a photographer, so I get to keep my exact photo structure as I like it. Essentially what DSM-7 Photo becomes for me is a portal to access my photos, not the storage backend. Though you can also use it as the storage backend. And so all I have to do is drag photos into my home slash photos folder, and they will automatically show up in here. And so what that means is, should down the line I find something better than Synology Photos, I can just go keep that exact photo structure and put it in whatever other application you need. That is one of the real advantages to this, is because it's not this proprietary ecosystem. Instead, you've got your Synology, and really all it's doing is reading the photos. You can add simple things like tags and delete them, but really it's a read-only thing, which I think is really important. Though one annoying thing is, you still can't specify any folder on your NAS to use as the photos folder. You have to use their or predetermined one, but I'll go ahead and show that now. So now it's gone ahead and installed, so we're just gonna go ahead and click open. And so it's gonna take you through a nice welcome menu and it basically gives you an overview and you can see the interface is honestly really clean. Then on the third step right here, it's got a option to enable the people album in my personal space. And so what this is, is facial recognition. Note, facial recognition is limited only to some of the more powerful units. I believe there are certain J models that do not have this, even though those same J models might have had facial recognition in DSM-6. So that is one thing to look out for, and it is one thing that has rubbed some people the wrong way. But if you have a more upgraded unit, you almost certainly have this. That is just one thing to know. Another thing is, it is not Google Photos level. The reason Google Photos has amazing facial recognition, probably the best out there, is due to the fact that they are using all of their users' data to train this AI. And so because of that, it's really good. You are going to get a decent AI here that finds most faces and does a pretty good job with it, but it's not going to be the Google Photos level where it's got this awesome algorithm. You just are not gonna have that on a self-hosted system because they just don't have the training data, but the advantage of it is your photos don't become training data for Google's AI. And so now we're just gonna go ahead and click Start Now. 
No, they've got some amazing applications for both iOS and Android. They are honestly like Google Apple level polish. I've been really impressed. They've done a huge revamp here. And on my last video on DSM-7 photos, I show it. It's remarkable. And I'm actually planning on switching to this and I might even update to DSM-7 early. It's a release candidate now, so it's a lot better just to be able to start doing this and really getting all my Lightroom export in a great clean file structure. And so here we've got a few different options for how to store photos. And so one thing you also might notice is if you don't have home folders enabled already, you might get a notification of, hey, you need to enable home folders to get this set up. Home folders are essentially a folder, and I'll go ahead and show them now, where if you go into file station, you look right here, you can see that if you're an admin, you should see this homes. So homes is essentially a different home folder for every single user. And so every single user will also have their own home folder. And so admins get to see everything on the NAS and that's why they get to see homes in all the homes, but regular users will only see their home directory, which is where you store your photos. And so right here in the aptly named folder photos, you can double click on it. And this is where you can start adding photos. This is actually from when I was testing out earlier. I'm going to go ahead and delete these to show you how great this is. All right. And so now, as you can see right here, we have no photos in here. So we've got two different options. We have a drag and drop here or add photos there. Or if you're like me and you want to keep your exact photo structure, we'll go ahead and go back into folders and we'll just copy in our other photos. So I've already set some up in here and we'll go ahead and just copy those over. We'll just move them into the home slash photos file. And so as you can see, I'm keeping my exact file structure. And so now they're just in the home photos folder. And so now if we go back in, hit the refresh button, which happens to be right there, you can see all of the photos have loaded in incredibly quickly. Let's even check out the CPU usage right now. They have just gone in super quickly and already made some beautiful previews, which I am really impressed by. We have ultra low CPU usage right now, which is quite surprising considering how these are massive DSLR files and the CPU is not missing a beat. If we go ahead and click on it, you can see how quickly we run through files. Even though these are massive files, we can check them out here. These are all eight megapixel, 1.2 megabyte files, which are quite large to be able to do this with. It is amazing how well this works and you can just absolutely fly through the files almost instantaneously. All right, and so now for people who are interested, I'm gonna drag and drop a few files directly in here, directly from my computer. The reason for this is for photographers, it's really important to keep your folder structure the way you like it, just in case you wanna walk away. So now we're just gonna drag and drop some files in here, and we're gonna see the default way that Synology manages the photo structure for files that are directly uploaded. All right, so as you can see, they very quickly got uploaded and are already in access here. And this all uses dates to find them. And so it immediately is able to find them and it even checks for duplicates. All right, and so now let's go back and let's see what that photo structure is now. And you can see as it was importing them, the CPU did spike, but it incredibly quickly went down. I've got a very powerful CPU in this DS 1621 plus compared to other NAS units. So it handled it with ease. Now we go back into file station, home, photos. We'll see that there's this photo library and it does the thing right, and it uses the date format to store these photos. This is how I personally store all my photos, and it is great. It is the format of year, month, and then all the images in there, and that is just such a great thing, because that way you don't have this unorganized, massive album of files that you just have to sort through. It uses the metadata of the images to figure out when they were taken, and that is great. That means that should you not like Synology's photo services down the line, being able to import this into any other photo application that does this should be a breeze because they're already in a great folder structure. So now they're back in here and we can see them and there's just so much stuff. So now let's say I wanna share some photos with my friends. Say I wanna show Katie this file. It's simply just hit share. And if you've got external access to your NAS, you can just do this and you've got options. You can invite specific users. I don't have a group set up for this, but you've got very nice and easy options here for what kind of permissions you like, as well as the fact that you can send it to, okay, you need to be able to have invitees only and only be able to use 
people in this group. So you can say administrators have access to this and be able to share it with them like that. Then you can also use DDNS or Quick Connect. Quick Connect's probably easier, but I've not got it set up on this unit. And you'll be able to have it shared external to your network. There's a lot of great options here. And on mobile, it runs really well, which is incredibly important in my opinion. So we'll just cancel that and we'll show you some other options. So we've also got the basic zoom and you can go through and you can see that these are full size images in the back side in case you need them. And then what's also awesome, especially for photographers is the metadata in here. So it supports the tags from Lightroom keywords and it also pulls the metadata from the actual image. And so it gives you all the values that were used with this lens. So it's got the basic, hey, what camera I was taking with, the f-stop, the shutter speed, the focal length, and the ISO. And then in more, it's got everything you could possibly need in here. It is incredibly impressive how much data they've put in here. And they've basically just dumped the entire XFS data structure right here so you can see everything you need. It is great to be able to see whatever metadata you have in this image is probably ending up right here. It's also got geolocation and it's also got the ability to edit tags and add a description there. It is really great and easy to use. Then we can exit out of it. And so now we can create albums. It's got people tagged. It did a pretty easy job. So let's just say, who is this? We'll say Will. And then we'll say Will. And it auto completes there, which is awesome. And so now it's going to merge them together. And that's Katie. And so just like that, it's gone through and it's not done a perfect job because it didn't realize that Katie and Katie are the same person. But it is going to be enough to find basic people and you can start having, okay, I wanna see all the photos of myself and be able to see them all throughout here, which is really great. It also supports videos and so you can really just back up your entire phone's library to this. I'm gonna do that in another video, but what you can do is you can basically use this just like Google Photos as a just backup to your phone's library. That means that should iCloud crash, should whatever photo structure you use crash, you will still have a backup of all your files and an easy way to share them if you want to. It's also got tag based albums, which is really great. And it even includes places, which is great. So I geotag with my camera. And so it knows, hey, these were all taken in the same place. And so that is so nice. And then it's also got sharing. So this is everything that's been shared with me. So as I showed you earlier, the sharing settings, and this is anything I've shared with other people. All right, and so now let's say I want to have shared storage where everybody has access to it. So to do that, it's actually really easy. You would need to be an administrator and go into settings and then go into shared space and just click enable shared space. If you don't already have a slash photo shared folder, it will create one for you. And so now you've got a few options here. You can set very specific access permissions, which is great. So you can say exactly who has access to which files. And I've been meaning to do a video on advanced share permissions in Synology but you can also set those here. And so you can say exactly who has access to which files. And then for whatever reason, if you wanted guests, basically people without logins, to be able to see all the files in this photo shared folder, you can operate that here. That's probably if you wanted a slideshow or something like that and just, hey, these are just photos to share with anybody. And then you can also enable the people album, so that facial recognition in there. And that's pretty what, much it. So now that we've done that, we can go back into photo and we'll see we've got this option to switch spaces. So right now we're in our personal space. Those are the files that only we can see until we share with somebody else. And we can go into shared space. And so right now there are no images in there, but we can easily add them in. We'll go back into file station and we'll see now we've got this photo folder. So I've got some files I wanna drag in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select this and click move. And I'm gonna move it to photo. So now that it's in photo, we'll hit refresh. And just like that, we have all those folders. And so now anybody who has access to that photos file 
will have access to see these images in there. And so this is a really easy way to have a massive group album where everybody just has easy read write to this one directory. And so you can have your, basically your entire family has access to this and then just use it like that. It's really great and really easy to set up rather than having one master user who has to control a single album. Instead, this is everybody shares that. And so really that's all there is to it. I love how passive of a use this is. You don't have to change your entire setup just to be able to use this. It is really great because you can walk away in the future and not lose out on all your photos and it's not going to be a giant hassle like it is to leave Google Photo. I think for most users, especially with external access, this is a great solution for people who want to walk away from Google Photos because at home, you can just buy as much hard drive space as you need and pay it one time fee rather than a monthly fee. And you know that Synology is not going to start upcharging you for more data storage because you own the NAS yourself. And so I think that's really valuable. And it's also just a really great performance settings because it doesn't modify your photos. Google Photos likes to do its own compression. And so this way you can store these massive files here and not worry about them being messed up later on. It also supports raw files, which will definitely cause your NAS to churn when you're importing them the first time. But should you need that, that's a great option. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. Go ahead, leave any of the tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. And if you wanna start sponsoring the channel and see all the videos early, there's a link for that in the description. All right, have a good one, bye.